Coach, it was almost setting up like it was last weekend, but you get the, the four spot there in the, the, the eighth inning. I mean, uh, how was the dugout engaged and maybe a little bit prepared for this moment? Well, I think they were pretty fired up. I mean, uh, do you, are you talking about the Isaac hit or well, I'm, I'm getting out Condon? Or? The whole thing. The whole thing in, in the eighth inning when you put up a four spot offensively. Well, I, you know, just some great at-bats. Um, Mersh gets the bunt. Um, Hunter Hines, I mean, is talented and powerful. He's a really pure hitter, and we've been waiting for one of those swings for a while, and I, I thought that was the, probably the play of the game, him just staying on the ball and driving it through the left side, and then obviously Connor fought through that one and got it. You know, you could see our dugout explode because we were pretty anemic there for those middle innings. You know, they, they had done a really good job. They pitched on the edges all night. Like we just didn't have much down the middle of the plate, and uh, they did a really nice job and kind of held us at bay. But you can be offensive real quick, three or four bats in a row, and, and you can win a ball game, and um, it's fun to see. Steph, what do you think Cal's been able to respond these past three weeks you know, the way he has after that LSU game? <clears throat> you know, he's getting better, just getting better. I mean, if you notice, there's more curveballs. It was really good tonight, which you have to have. This lineup's scary, you know, especially all the right-handers they had in there. The slider's been better. Uh, he always has located the fastball. And I just think he's getting out, you know, get, getting going earlier. You know, his first, you know, his two outings he kind of struggled in, struggled early. So uh, he's come out and been very attentive to that, just being being sharp and being ready to go. I thought he was great early on today and late. Bobby, going back to that eighth inning, I mean, how many times does it feel like Mersh is the guy that kind of spearheads those, the start of something? He's and also, was that a called bunt or is that his call? That's right his there? call. That's totally his call. So I'll call some, but that one was his. So, um, and it was, I mean, he is. He is in the middle of everything. And then he's running, and then the pitcher starts looking at him, and he creates a lot of havoc out there. He's a fun player. Benjamin, didn't end up mattering quite as much because of the late runs, but I thought one of the key plays of the game was Connor Isaac going from first to third on the hit by Bryce Chance. Can you say about his aggressive base running and just reading that ball? Yeah, it's a. Uh, you know, he's a super athletic kid. So, and we have talked about, I don't know if you saw us last week at Florida, we did the same thing. We just, they are, um, a lot of teams in the SEC like to play deep. And so we just said, hey, we're going to go first to third on as many as we can. And um, he did a great job. That's, that's an extra run right there probably in that game. Steve? Uh, late scratch, you know, with Charlie Goldstein, I mean, how does that change your preparation when you find out just before game time they're going to throw somebody different? We found out this morning. So it wasn't a late. It wasn't too late. So before all our meetings and scouting reports and everything. So, um, you know, and then so we were able to prepare. So their coach had called ahead just when they found out. So we, when we when we got here at the office this morning, we knew. So it wasn't a, as big of a deal. Probably we probably would have been better off facing Charlie, even though Charlie's really good, like um, one of the better left-handers in our league. Doug, coach, uh, camp doing two and third today. We know he likes to pitch every day, but can we expect to see him Saturday and Sunday? I don't know about I don't know about tomorrow, but he's he will be ready to pitch. Like when he is needed, he'll he'll tell you. And he's got that rubber arm. I mean, it's uh, you know pretty impressive what he did out there tonight. Jack, it seems like Connor since SEC plays SEC play has started is just kind of a different hitter. I guess why do you think he's kind of taken that next step to really? I think it's probably more comfort, time. comfortable, just comfortable being out there every day, confident in himself. Um, you can tell early in the year he's kind of feeling his way through, and um, right now it's just a lot of good things he does in a ball game. You know, he's just absolutely perfect out in center field. And you look back when you recruited him to Florida, he was a shortstop. Well, I don't know if he was a shortstop. He thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but no, he like you said, he hasn't played out. He hasn't played center field long. He's a just a crazy athlete. He can do a lot of things for it's big athlete. He reminds me of Jordan Westberg, the body type and the way he runs and moves around. Um, and got a really strong arm. I mean, he just do a little bit of everything. Robbie, uh, three straight starts now for Cal, where he's come out and kept you in the ball game. Actually, left with the lead. He had a tough start against LSU. What have you seen from him the last three weekends that he's been able to kind of stack it like this? I, I think it's the the off speed. You know, I think it's mainly his off speed stuff. Just being able to command his off speed and throw his off speed in there. And, um, and he's just, you know, I just think the LSU was a little bit of an anomaly. He's really been pretty good. You know, that was, a, that was a really tough start for him. and um, He's a tough kid. Like, he was, you know, Park said before he went out there to take him out, like, you know, is he gonna, he's going to make me keep him in the game. You know, he just, he's the kid that doesn't want to come out. Like, that's Shulky, too. Like, they are ultra-competitive kids, and they're a little bit mean. They're, they don't mean to be really disrespectful, but they just they are competing. They don't want to come out, um, which, is a, which is a good thing to have. Steve? 
you know what a competitor Schulke is too. You know he wanted to dance with Charlie Condon there, and he gets him on one pitch to bounce that. That was a huge point in this ball game. But what does that mean for his confidence level to go out there in a big moment and get a hitter of that caliber out? Cam Schulke's confidence is always right here, so I don't know if that changed anything. He's probably the most confident kid I got. Um, but yeah, it was a big moment in the game. I mean that that guy's scary. I mean we we have. I feel like the last couple weeks, I've seen some of the best hitters I've seen in my career. Tommy White, um, Lavalette, and Montgomery, and Caglione, and, and now you got Charlie Condon and all, all the other great hitters in their lineup. Like uh, our league has some really special hitters right now, but that was a, that was a great pitch by Cam. Like that was, um, you know, big play in the game. Steph saw you know last week the way the team responded after that first game to, to get a big win. You obviously have a tough midweek and they respond again. I guess. Why do you think this team, maybe more so than the last couple years, has been able to flush a loss and move on? It's it's a it's a lot it's a lot of chemistry. I would say. I mean, I just think they um, we're we're growing. We're still. I, I talked about today. We're about at the halfway point, and how much better can we get? Look at all the adversity we've had to go through to this point, and they still come out and they play hard and they, they love each other. I mean, it's a tight tight group. Cam. Getting those four runs in the eighth, just how much easier does that make your job going into the ninth, and then how much more confidence? You know, it's amazing. It doesn't feel any easier. I mean, even with the four, but yeah, it does. It, it, it gives you a little bit of gap, lets you relax. When you walk the first guy, it's, you know, you, you, you're not as pressed, and um, it, was, it was good. We needed that. You know, that, you know, we, we lose a couple games late last week, but you look back and you, it's not, it, yeah, you'd pitch better in the ninth, but it's also, we could have added on earlier. I think people forget that, you know, and, and so. Our ability to add on there and make it a non-pressure situation was huge. Connor, it's kind of a frustrating ball game. They they set you guys down 15 in a row, and then Mercer gets that bunt. The next thing you know, the big guns get up, and obviously Hunter's home uh, base hit was big. But for you to have a chance to put that one away, what that ball feel like leaving the ballpark, kind of having finally having a chance to relax this ball game? Oh, I felt really good um, in the moment. I mean, probably blacked out a little bit. Don't really. Remember the swing much, but uh, felt really good. Took the pressure off us, and that's that's what we needed. I mean, we've been one swing away, one pitch away in so many games, and finally got it. And it feels good. Robbie, Cal, this is such a tough lineup to get through, and there's really no holes in it. And we even saw eight and nine getting on base. Just uh, how did you feel like you attacked that lineup today, top to bottom? Uh, not just you know top of the order, but even those guys towards the bottom too. Yeah, I think it's just sticking to the game plan that we got and and rolling with the punches. I mean, when you're out there, it's just uh, you got to be a fighter and you gotta you gotta make your on-field adjustments. So, just being able to like feel confident in everything I'm doing and, and rolling with it. Benjamin, uh, Connor, I thought one of the key plays in the game early on was when he went first to third on on Bryce's head. What did you see there, and is that that kind of aggressive base running something that you you guys have been working on as a group? Um, yeah, we talk about it all the time. I mean, we, we like to think that we're a really aggressive base running team. Um, a lot of teams get to see play deep in the outfield. Um, you just got to take advantage of it. I mean, Bryce hit that ball perfect up the middle. He's got a good turn, and he let the legs do the rest of the work. Steph Hawk. Cal, uh, Coach Lamonis was saying that he felt that LSU game for you was you know, an anomaly for what you could do. Why do you feel like you were able to flush that and have you know, these three straight outings that you've had in SEC play? Yeah, I mean, I think that's just baseball. Like, sometimes you get punched in the mouth, and it's just how you react. So just, uh, like, not getting too down or anything like that, just being even kill and, and carrying that through the rest of the season. Doug? Yeah, going back to, um, you know, we had an offensive drought for the second straight game, but I guess the difference was pitching help the, the opposition there this time. As you're going through that and, and, and you've got a one-run lead, I mean, can Texas do kind of what you're thinking? Or you, I know it's a lot more than I'm just not going to let them score, but what, what are you thinking when you're going back out there and, and you still got a one-run lead? Yeah, I'm just thinking compete. I always, always compete and put my best self out there and, and let it go as it does. Benjamin? Uh, Cal, Coach was talking about uh, your off-speed pitches and how that sort of threw, uh, really helped you out these last few starts. Um, and, Anything happened that's really, you know, gotten, gotten your confidence up in terms of throwing your off speed and breaking stuff? Yeah, I think it's just like being out there and doing it. So I've had some good success with, with my off speed, like you're saying, and just being able to, to feed off that and trusting my defense behind me to make plays and not, not try to be too perfect on the mound. Steve. Cal, 
a lot of guys want to pitch this Georgia lineup backwards almost, but you came out early, kind of established the fastball early, kind of like it was a statement, like, you know, we're here to compete. Was that really part of your game plan tonight that you, you weren't going to go up there and be somebody you weren't? Yeah, I think that's that's who it's always going to be and how it's always going to be. So it's just put my best self out there in competing and, and uh, trust my guys around me. Jack? Connor, it seems like ever since SEC play started, you've just kind of been a really hot hitter. Why do you think you've been able to just kind of take that next step forward to really you know, be an impact with that in the middle of the lineup? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> I would just say it's just, it's just competing at a high level. I mean, um, you kind of forget about like little things you're feeling and you kind of just in the moment. Um, and you just got to let yourself be in the moment. Don't over, don't overthink it and don't try to do too much. And it's been good. Steph? Connor, we saw in the you know eighth inning how Mershon could kind of spark a rally there. And Cal, for you, I mean, there's so many times throughout the game where we see you know Mershon go to the mound and even talk to the pitchers a bit. So, you know, for both of you, what does he kind of add to this team that maybe we don't see in the box score, you know, in the, the the game days? What does he kind of add that maybe we don't see? I mean, I would say energy. I mean, I feel like everyone sees that though. Um, it's he's a leader. I mean, he plays the game the right way, and um, I mean, you can see it day to day. You got anything? I would just say it's a positive voice, and it, it's nice to hear that when you're out there fighting. So understand you guys have your back, and it feels good. Steve? Kind of Coach Mona said at the beginning of the year that uh, one of the things he wished he'd done different last year was get you more at bats. So you were kind of an X factor this year for this offense. Well, how does it feel now that you're, you're getting your playing every day, but not only are you playing, but you're a guy now that people have to kind of game plan against? I mean, it feels good. I mean, I don't think I really change anything, just being myself. Um, the game come to me and um, like you said playing every day is a great great feeling and um, I mean it's the guys around me really uh, let me just be me which is nice. Doug. Connor, uh, coach said that you uh, when you came here you, you might have aspired to be a shortstop but uh, just asking how, how do you feel the center field now and, and what do you think you've done to make yourself a better defensive player out there? Um, I mean moved to the outfield when I came here um, kind of utility last year, but um, really found a home in the outfield and just really trust my athletic ability um, and really just working hard every day last year, this fall, um, being the best center fielder I can be. Steph? Cal, I'm curious from your perspective as a, as a pitcher, what's it like watching Cam when he goes out there? Uh, how impressive is it seeing you know, the, the way he's able to make you know, hitters uncomfortable? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, that guy is special. And, uh, Sometimes during practice, you know, we kind of mess around. We're like, oh, I'm going to try this pitch. I'm going to try that pitch. It's hard. So uh, it's, it's really special, and we're grateful he's on our team. Dan, can you kind of talk about that play in the outfield where you had to come back and you had to almost get that ball yeah, yeah, yeah. or hit just like us through that play? And what were you seeing out there? Um, so I w I'm playing oppo gap on him. Um, he, I thought he got, got on the ball pretty good to the left center gap. So started booking it too much and I almost overran it. Uh, kind of died on me and uh, luckily I could uh, find my feet and make the play.